Good evening, Pots, and welcome back to Basic Fundamentals MiG-29 for DCS World. Um, today we will be going over air to ground mode in the MiG-29. Um, it's uh, pretty simple to use, doesn't require a whole lot, but as usual, before we get started, let me make a correction on a couple, on one thing, one correction, one new news. So one of our viewers, Galf, pointed both of these out to me. Thank you very much. Uh, the first one I knew I did. I shouldn't have done it, so let's just get right after it. Um, if we hit um, O on our keyboard, okay, we get our EO mode, right? Electrical optical, electro optical sensor. I called this a GHMCS last time. It is absolutely not. They are nowhere close. Uh, the GHMCS has incredibly more functionality than the electrical optical electro optical system. Um, I'll never be able to say that in one attempt. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that uh, you guys understand this is a helmet mounted targeting system it is not uh, the queuing system and it does not have anywhere near the functionality that the uh, JHMCS does I knew that I said it last time I knew I should have backed out re-recorded it and said it correctly I was lazy I was tired there I admit it sue me okay but once again Galf thank you uh, all you did was solidify that I should have corrected that so my apologies guys um, now to the new news again brought to us by Galf. If we go into boresight mode, number three on our keyboard, you can see that we have our boresight uh, indicator that comes up on the screen. What we didn't know, let me center our screen there, is that you can slew it. With the same slewing controls that you use to move your radar screen or your radar TDC around, you can slew the boresight mode. So really handy in the event, like for example, you're pulling in a high G turn with a bandit, okay, you've got a lead aspect on him, so he's just beneath you. You can simply move your pipper down, lock your target up, release your weapon, and vice versa. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is, let's say he's just, you've really got a little bit of uh, uh, equal but high aspect on him, you know, just kick it over and boom, you got your bandit. So, cool feature, just hit number three to center it. Um, I thought you guys would find that really cool, I certainly did, so... Uh, once again, one more time, thank you, Galf. Appreciate the uh, the input there. Makes a big difference. That's exactly what I want from this channel. All right. Now that we have that stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and get into what we're here for, which is to talk about air-to-ground mode. So the first thing I'm going to do is put us back on target here. Uh, well, we got some distance, didn't we? Okay. Well, that works out because we have plenty to talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and turn us back out towards feet wet here a little bit get us closer to our target, slow our aircraft down. Now, to put us into air-to-ground mode, the first thing we're going to do is hit number 7 on our keyboard. Hitting pause for a second here, left Alt and Charlie to bring up our cursor. First you have our range go, we're certainly sent to 10 nautical miles. You can see that the range indicator uh, is up here. We're currently looking something at about six and a half, seven nautical miles. And this is what is giving us its range. So if I unpause for a second and we look at our pipper, and I put our nose down, you can see the range scale changes, right, based on where the pipper is pointed. Pausing again for a second. You can see that we're in CCIP mode. We're in ground attack. We have our outer uh, munitions selected, and we have the inner munitions obviously down the bottom just like it before. So um, outer munitions selected, we know this by them being elevated from the other line. And we have the B on our HUD here indicating that we have a bomb selected. Currently on the outer stores we have a 250-pound um, lightweight bomb and then we have two cluster bombs on the inner stores. Now to deploy the weapons is pretty simple. All we're going to do is put our cursor, our pipper down there at the bottom um, over our target. Once we have our target we're going to hold the trigger down. We'll see that pipper turn into a diamond. And then it's just a matter of holding the trigger until the bomb is released. And I'll show you guys what that looks like. We'll see the range indicator come down. Eventually we'll see our RM in and RM max line. And uh, just like we see with our missile. So you have the RM maximum range. You will see an LA for launch authorization. Once you have the launch authorization, the bombs we can release can be released. So let's go ahead and get out here to our target range. I'm going to go ahead and accelerate just a bit here. All right, so we can see out there in the distance. Go ahead and zoom in a bit. X marks the spot for target. So I said before, we're going to come in. We're going to find our target and then release our weapons here. Now, the pipper is going to change location based on what kind of weapon you have. If you have a uh, high drag weapon, okay, something with a nice shoot on it or, or drag fins, you're going to see the pipper drop down low. When you have a low drag weapon, such as rockets or... Um, you know, a uh, lightweight dumb bomb, 
okay you'll see it be on the on the higher end of it all right now currently let's go ahead and find our target now you can see I'm not using a real steep angle and actually let's take her down a little bit I'm actually a little higher than I want to be to be able to show you guys I want to make sure everyone can see the targets now I am by no means an expert so forgive me for the poor performance here I've got a row of targets out there and you can sort of see them um, on the edge of the runway and then there's some got a whole bunch of row, row of trucks here we got trucks on our armored vehicles on each end of the runways there so but I'm gonna go ahead and find my target right about there you can see it turn to diamond notice the range scale dropping 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 and, and bombs away okay so I, did, I held the trigger all the way down until the bombs were released let's see if we hit anything survey says I'll actually take that <laughs> all right so shack times one okay so now we're gonna come in with the cluster bombs and you can see that automatically uh, change you can see that we're uh, in dispense so when you see this DSB that means you have a cluster bomb selected okay so let's get some distance here and then we'll turn her around all right it's so coming around I'm gonna really give her some pull here Okay, and this time, let's go after a row of Jeeps here. So I really hope you guys can see them. Hope this comes out in the recording well. Right about there. Oh. Gotta keep that diamond in your HUD. Bomb away. Okay, that was really cool. That was some serious clusterage right there. Okay, so um, that's the basic principle for the bombs, guys. Um, just remember, base if the pipper's down low, okay, you're using a high drag weapon, so you want a low profile angle of attack. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at what a high uh, or a low drag weapon would look like. In this case, we'll be looking at the rockets. I'll be right back, and uh, we'll go blow some more crap up. All right, so we're back in the MiG-29 here. We've got some rockets set up here, and you guys can see that by the S-8K. Uh, and now, notice, though, what was different here. Okay, so remember before, um, we got the indicator of what weapon was selected based on the station. Okay, now I've got two different variations of the rockets. I don't remember which one, so sue me on that one. I, f I apologize. Um, but notice that they're all level-headed there. Okay, so if we switch weapons, there you go, the S-8 uh, uh, Foxtrot Papa 2s. All right, but they don't elevate here, so you're going to want to really pay close attention to what you have selected here. Um, now let's go ahead and turn back in, and you can see our range scale is currently set to 25 nautical miles, but that's going to change as we come in on our targets. Now these are really fun. They work much like a machine gun. We're just going to line up and let those puppies roll, so I'm going to come in pretty high. All right, and let's give a little rudder collection. There's our launch authorization I was telling you about. Letting them loose. Look at that. Boom. All right. Yeah, it didn't get as many as I wanted to, but that was still fun. Okay, so then now we'll come back in one more time for the second round of rockets. These are armored targets, so I guess I won't feel too bad. Let's go after these boys here. And... There you go. And it looks like we still may have a couple left. Let's 
So that is the cool part. It will dispense as long as you hold the trigger down. Okay, like I said, just like a machine gun. Um, so if you time it right, you can get a couple of rounds off. I just like seeing that ridiculous barrage of, of rockets come off the rails. Okay, so give her a little rudder authority here. See what we got left here. I have no idea what our count still is. Woo! I better get that nose up. <laughs> I had two left. Okay, so they were in line. Uh, let's see if we got anything. Did we hit it? Nope, we missed. Okay. Alright, guys, so that was air to ground mode in a hand basket. Like I said, there really isn't much to it. The last thing I'll talk about really quick is the um, manual gun sight. So the manual gun sight can be selected by pressing number 8 on your number row. Uh, the gun itself um, is center lined as far as the release point, maximum release point of the gun will go right in the center of the crosshair. Maximum release point basically means that it's where the bullet will travel until it starts to drop. Okay, and then here the X is your backup missile aiming cue. Um, in my experience in practicing with it, very unreliable, but to give you guys an idea, um, just to fire the gun. Watch where the, gu the rounds go right before they descend. Okay. So you can see what I'm talking about. Um, learning how to use the range scale, that's going to require a lot of practice. Okay, it's obviously all based on altitude and angle of attack and airspeed. All of that's going to be taken into consideration as far as what your bullets actually hit when you're uh, using the manual gun sight. Um, obviously, the more steep angle of attack, right? So. The more vertically down your nose is, the more precise the rounds are going to be on target, Okay, but the more likely you are to hit the ground yourself. So be careful with using that. By all means, practice with it. Um, I haven't really tried it using the dumb bombs. Um, kind of tricky, plus the CCIP mode works so well um, that I just haven't really found a need to. So again, 8 toggles the gun manual gun sight on and off, 7 puts you into um, air to ground mode. Um, remember to pay attention to your uh, your range indicator. You have your R max and R min line, just like you did with the missiles. The weapon can't be released until you've exceeded the R max line, and also shouldn't be released once you pass the R min. Now, R min typically means that you're about to hit the ground, so you might want to pay attention to that. Um, unguided bombs. Put your pipper over your target. Hold your trigger down. Once it turns into a diamond, make sure the diamond always maintains in view of the HUD. Once the uh, range indication reaches the correct release point, the bombs will automatically release. Once the bombs come off the rail, you can let go of the trigger. Um, with high drag and low drag weapons, pay attention to pipper location. If pipper is down low as it is now, you're using a high drag weapon. If the pipper is up high, you're using a low drag weapon. Okay, low drag weapons, when the pipper is up higher, you're going to want more of a, uh, a steeper angle of attack. Um, is desired, so more like dive bombing versus um, the uh, strafing method that we use sort of with the cluster bombs, but both work. I just find that uh, with the high drag weapons, I prefer a higher angle of attack. I typically come in about 30 to 40 degrees, dive bomb it, release the weapons, uh, turn and disengage. But I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial as always. Um, like and subscribe. Leave your comments below. Clearly, guys, I, I hope you know how much I appreciate those comments. I, I do listen to them. I try to respond to everyone that I see. If I haven't gotten back to you, I do apologize. It's not personal. Um, but keep bringing me those comments. I do pay attention to the feedback. And if you're teaching us something new, if, you, if there's something that I feel is going to be valuable for the channel, I will absolutely demonstrate it. So thank you for your continued support. I hope the channel continues to grow. This has been a lot of fun. And until next time, this is Overkill.